channels we can review. Marriage, divorce, discrimination, and crime in Israel. Channeling the great Leonard Bernstein. Debunking the idea of the lone genius. And more of the Jewish news that's changing your world right now in this episode of the Week in Review. Hello and welcome to the Jewish Channel's Week in Review. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. A woman trapped in her marriage for 14 years was finally given a Jewish divorce last week. The woman, whose name was not disclosed due to Israeli privacy laws, had been in a whirlwind tour through the Israeli rabbinical and general court system to try to get the divorce she sought. A fascinating illustration of just how difficult it can be for women in such marriages to extricate themselves. It took the woman six years for the Israeli rabbinical court to rule that the husband must give her a religious divorce or get, and then six years after that for the rabbinical court to rule that the husband should be imprisoned for failure to provide the get since he'd originally been ordered to do so. It was only when the suit recently reached the Supreme Rabbinical Court, with Chief Rabbi David Lau sitting on the panel and ruling on the arguments, that it was decided that the husband did not have a right to demand a payment of approximately $80,000 from the wife in order to grant her the divorce she sought. In a separate case in Israel, a cult leader is going to jail, and it may release dozens of women from marriage. Goel Ratzon was convicted of nine counts of rape, sexual abuse, and incest charges, stemming from a role leading a group in which he was reported to have as many as 32 common-law wives. But for innocent couples who just want to get married in the Israeli town of Petah Tikva, the local rabbinate is simply refusing, according to news reports. An estimated 10,000 Ethiopian Israeli Jews live in the town of Petah Tikva, and local Sephardi chief rabbi Benjamin Atias has reportedly turned down many Ethiopian Israeli couples looking to get married, and they've had to travel to other parts of Israel to do so. Israel's chief rabbinate responded to the reports with a statement declaring, quote, the law and the chief rabbinate of Israel's procedure mandates that any rabbi who registers marriages serve every Jewish Israeli citizen without discrimination, including members of the Ethiopian community. If a breach of the law or procedure will be discovered in this case, the issue will be thoroughly investigated and rectified. Moving on, one of the great musical minds of the 20th century, Leonard Bernstein, wowed audiences around the globe as composer, conductor, pianist, and more. Now his story is grabbing audiences with a new biographical musical starring Hershey Felder. Meredith Gansman spoke with Felder as part of the new TJC series Row J, and here's what she found. I got to teach music to the entire world on television. I had become the world's musical rabbi. Except it pulled me in every direction but the one that I wanted. To compose. No, that's not actually a reincarnation of Leonard Bernstein. It's pianist and actor Hershey Felder bringing the iconic composer and conductor back to life in the show Maestro. I've always wanted to time travel, and this is the best way to do it. Felder's one-man show most recently played New York's Town Hall, the venue where the public first paid to hear Leonard Bernstein's work, which includes such Broadway musicals as West Side Story, Candide, On the Town, and Wonderful Town. Felder says Bernstein's work was rooted in his Jewish upbringing, and he drew from Hebraic melodies for some of his most famous music. The musical structure of the work is such that beautiful melodies always lead the way, with sexual rhythmic energy bubbling underneath. Bernstein's father, a Talmudic scholar, did not always support his son's talent, however. He had a father who had absolutely no interest in him pursuing a musical career. Kind of, you're too smart to be a musician, you need to do something real with your life. Something that I had heard sometimes at home, myself, but albeit my father and my parents were very supportive. Similarly to his music and upbringing, Felder understands Bernstein's very complicated character. For more from Hershey Felder as Leonard Bernstein in Maestro, tune into Row J and the full broadcast version of The Week in Review. Thank you, Meredith. When it comes to evaluating these individual geniuses, where do they come from? Christian Neiden set out to find some answers. Two creative men sitting across from one another talked about the importance of working in pairs when it comes to innovation. Author Joshua Wolf Shank and screenwriter Mark Bowl discussed Shank's new book, Powers of Two, for a full classroom at the 92nd Street Y last week. And TJC spoke with Shank about his work and the power of pairs. This thing we call chemistry or electricity or synergy 
trying to understand this quality between people that buoys both up and allows people to do something beyond what they could do on their own, which we're familiar thinking about with Lennon McCartney or Watson and Crick, sort of these very famous pairs. But the book is about the way that this quality is actually fundamental to the creative process and shows up in all kinds of spheres. And that extends to working in pairs in the religious sphere of Judaism. This idea of the Havruta, the, 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 the dyad that is at the heart of Jewish study is resonant with what, I'm, with what I'm looking at. The Jewish tradition is all about studying Talmud and Torah in pairs and that actualize and activate a kind of energetic uh, you know, movement through a text. Uh, but also has a kind of intimacy and, uh, and um, you know, a, a, a very close quality, and that's something that the pair brings, uh, that you lose in a group and that you also lose when you have a solitary person. Shank noted how a myth of this solitary genius can be ascribed to famous people whose creative partner is not well known to the general public. Vincent van Gogh and his brother Theo, we know one but not the other, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, same deal. Steve Jobs, many people think of as a lone genius, but in fact, his creative life was was riven with relationships all the way through. Shank expanded on his view of the Van Gogh brothers in his conversation with Bull. I had known when I started the book that he had a brother named Theo that he wrote in many letters, and I'd seen Theo described as his porter. Um, what surprised me is the extent to which they were entwined from the very beginning of Vincent's career. Um, it's actually not clear to me that Vincent did not become an artist in the first place in order to stay in relationship with his brother. It was his last thread um, before he you know, fell down in true madness. To hear more from author Joshua Wolf Shank and screenwriter Mark Bowl about Shank's new book, Powers of Two, please tune into the full broadcast edition of The Week in Review. Thank you, Christian. Finally, on this week's episode of Up Close, we all know that economists take a deep look at what we do with our money, but they also look at what we do with our time. In this week's episode, we're looking at both. There are lots of people telling you what to do with your money on television, in newspapers, on Twitter, and everywhere else. Indeed, much of what they share is advice you don't have to pay for. But Joshua Brown, the reform broker, says that there's a reason why all that advice is so cheap, and it should affect how you listen to it. He is co-author of Clash of the Financial Pundits, How the Media Influences Your Investment Decisions for Better or Worse. But when we're thinking about what's the best thing to do with our assets, Few of us reflect on the idea that our most valuable asset is time, and that affects how we live our daily lives and how we organize ourselves as people and as Jews. George Washington University professor Carmel Chiswick discusses the intersection of Jewish life and economics in her book, Judaism in Transition, How Economic Choices Shape Religious Tradition. And then we'll speak with someone else about how money and time intersect and how giving your savings more time to grow is perhaps the best financial decision you can make. I speak with investment advisor Rick Edelman about his book, The Truth About Retirement Plans and IRAs. Here are some of the highlights from my interview with Carmel Chiswick. What are some of the insights that economics has for, for looking at a religious community? We, we really worry mostly about time budding, budgeting. So we say, is this activity worthwhile? Is it worthwhile to keep kosher? I mean, that's an economic language. But we all allocate our time. We save time, we budget time, and Jewish time is very demanding. So we have to worry about that as well. So once you start thinking about time allocation as an economic choice, and then you start thinking about the time it takes to do Jewish, and you realize that you've got a life full of trade-offs. One of the things that that you suggest uh, uh, about how Judaism then relates to to uh, to that Jewish community that has mm -hmm. so much income that the kind of really light you know, Judaism light approach that tri that stressed having low time commitment for high income Jews in the middle of the 20th century doesn't really cut it anymore. They want a more fulfilling experience. My own opinion is that highly educated Jews want a more intense experience also, especially those in the professions that, that where they exercise their knowledge and skill. It, dep it makes you feel very competent, and really competence is the watchword. And then you don't want to show up on a Saturday in the synagogue and feel incompetent. You want to be competent as a person. Not, I mean, you don't want to separate yourself. And 
So I think that the people who are independent, competent in the daily life, in their secular jobs, want to feel competent when they're in their Jewish lives as well. And that's the big appeal of Jewish education and Jewish books and uh, uh, j just generally Jewish intellectual life. Um, and if you don't feel competent, then that's not a good use of your time. You want to do something where you will feel competent. You can see the full episode of Up Close on the Jewish Channel on cable. You can also listen to the full audio of Up Close as a podcast, available on iTunes or in your favorite podcast player. That's all for this week. From all of us here at the Jewish Channel, be well. The Jewish Channel is available on cable, Time Warner Cable Channel 1640, Iowa Link Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Cox Cable Channel 1, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and on Comcast on the on-demand menu on the Jewish Channel. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.